Hello everyone and welcome back to the Board Gaming Doctor. My name is Phil and I'll be your Board Game Doctor today. In this segment, I want to wrap up a few quick thoughts on games that I played in February that I haven't had a chance to talk about in their own separate videos. Some of these games I've only played once and are newer games to me. Some are older titles that I've just gotten back into recently as well. As you can see, I played a lot more games than I will mention here in this video. And some of these games I do want to dedicate more time to and some additional plays as well. So I will save those for a future time. But for now, let's get into some of these games that I played in February. First, with the release of the new Dominion app, I've been able to play Dominion again after having not played it in a while. The app itself is neatly done, and the UI is intuitive. I was able to make sense of everything, and knowing the rules already, it was easy to jump in and play a game real quick. I like the availability of all the expansions on the app as well, or most of them from what I gather. And playing Dominion again reminded me of how fun this game really is. It really is a race to find synergies among the card decks that are set up at the beginning of the game, and getting those provinces or other scoring cards before others can get to them. Accomplishing that by building a money engine. I can't wait to continue playing this more, and it's great because if I ever find it dull with what I have available, there are so many expansions that I do own physically and that I can try out digitally as well, that it'll keep it interesting for many plays to come. Next, I had the chance to play Captain Flip on Board Game Arena. This is a game that is being released this year from Playpunk, and it is a game designed by Remo Considori and Paolo Mori. I admit that seeing Mori's name on the box made me think that this game would be a little bit more complex, but this is a very light game about placing tiles onto your tableau, which is a pirate ship. Each tile that you place has two sides to it, and you can either choose to place the tile that you draw, face up, or you can flip it and then place the other side anywhere on your tableau from the bottom up. The tiles have placement bonuses and whatnot, and it's not too hard to learn the game as you go and to figure out what the tiles do. This is a pretty breezy game that I can see being played and being great for kids, which I think is the target audience for this game. There aren't a lot of decisions to make in this game, and it feels pretty random basically deciding what to do with the tile that you drew. So I feel like it's great for that target audience and for probably not uh, experienced or heavy gamers. Next, I had the chance to play Trailblazers again this month. This is a Ryan Courtney design that was released last year, and I had the chance to review this game when it was available on Kickstarter as a tabletop simulator mod a couple years back. And now this game is currently, I believe, in beta on Board Game Arena. This game takes one of the main mechanisms of the bigger Ryan Courtney game pipeline of drafting and laying down rectangular cards with routes on them. And the goal is to place these routes in front of you connecting different outdoor venues. For example, you have the brown hiking trails or the red bike trails that you place and connect routes to, while doing so trying to fulfill public objectives as well. Think of this game as a mechanical gaming separation from a bigger game, taking a mechanism or a system that worked really well in a bigger game and making a game in and of itself, very much like Patchwork is for A Feast for Odin or Mercado de Lisboa for Lisboa. I had fun playing this game again, and I really like the wrinkle of being able to place your cards on top of ones that you've already played, thus adding to the decisions of where you can place them. I look forward to many more plays of this on Board Game Arena. Finally, I had the chance to play Votes for Women. This game is designed by Tori Brown and published by Fort Circle Games. I play this digitally on the website rallythetroops.com, and the link will be found below. You are simulating the struggle that women had in the 19th and 20th centuries to gain the right to vote in the United States, with one or two players simulating the suffragists, and the other simulating quote-unquote the man, or those who would oppose it. This game played a lot like other war-themed games like that utilize cards like Twilight Struggle, Watergate, uh, Pax Premier, and mechanically like War of the Ring the card game, using historical people in votes for women and events in the time periods depicted not to only teach us about history but also to use them as actions in various ways. They're kind of like multi-use cards, whether to play them for the actions that they have or to use them in, in other ways to advance your cause in the game. I'm not going to go into a lot of rules because this is a somewhat heavy game, but this is a game that can become very meta-driven, just like all the other games that I mentioned before, meaning that once you understand the mechanisms of the cards, 
and the way that the game progresses because you play cards in certain eras of history that are time appropriate and so they're always going to be coming out in the same uh, periods of time but just in different orders basically and as you slowly learn to uh, about these cards you learn to anticipate the opponent and can maneuver you know with feints and bluffs and things like that which i find fascinating and it rem reminds me a lot of playing a trading card game where once you understand how to pilot your own deck you do understand different deck archetypes as well of how your opponents play and you can anticipate what they do and react accordingly i think it would take a lot of plays to really understand this game and i really respect that and coupled with a great theme which i think this game has rightfully gotten a lot of praise and has been a hit for many uh, players in the last couple of years that it's been published i personally have a hard time getting into these more history themed games not only because of the time investment that i think it would take to learn the mechanisms of these games as well as to learn the meta if you were to be able to play this with uh, a bunch of people and i think these games are really meant to be played back to back with the same folks and so you really get to understand the game however it is very viable to play it online and you can still play and anticipate what your opponent may do it's just hard to anticipate the playing level or the experience of the opponent as well and so i can see situations where the game may feel a little bit lackluster. I probably <laughs> did this myself as I learned this game and was probably creating a really easy scenario for my opponent to win the game outright uh, based off of the mistakes that were made on my part. But I, I really respect the way that these games are designed in twofold, not only to bring together a mechanically sound game, but also to have a theme that is impactful and meaningful and is able to teach us about the past and so i can see myself getting into them a little bit more one day games such as votes for women as well as the others that i mentioned before so those weren't obviously the only games that i played but those were the ones that i felt deserved to be mentioned a little bit from this past month let me know if you would like to hear more about these games if i should play them a little bit more deeply and should give them a full review and let me know if you had a game that stood out to you this month that i had not mentioned and convince me to play it in upcoming months. Thanks for consulting with us, and I hope you schedule an appointment with your board gaming doctor real soon. Take care.